Alex Sutherland here, back with part two on my series on epsilon equilibrium distance and scientifically measuring the quality of GTO strategies. And if you guys watched part one, I gave some theoretical background on why we'd want to do this, where this measurement comes from. Uh, today, we're just going to look at the nitty gritty of how you actually do the calculation so that you guys can go and do this on your own. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on looking at turn and river spots because there's going to be some manual data entry and getting a strategy into CREV, which is going to be our tool of choice for these kind of measurements. And inputting a whole you know, strategy, say, from pre-flop, where we have to know what to do on every possible flop, every possible turn, every possible river, that's just going to be way too much work for us to ever actually get that strategy into CREV and measure a distance. So instead, even if we want to take a look at some strategy that is a big strategy that knows what to do uh, across all the streets, um, we'll just look at a slice of that strategy and measure the quality of that slice. And if the epsilon equilibrium distance, say on some particular river, is very high, we probably know that the strategy as a whole is likely not very accurate. If it's low, then we can look at some other slices and keep exploring until we have good reason to believe that the solution is high quality overall. So let's get into the nuts and bolts. How do we actually calculate an epsilon distance? Carvener's EV is going to be our tool of choice here. Um, and the steps are pretty simple, they're just a little time consuming. So step one is going to be that we input the candidate strategies. Remember, an equilibrium is not a statement about one strategy, it's a statement about how two strategies interact in conjunction. And so we need two strategies, one for each player in our you know, two-player game, to actually check if they, are an equi or if they are an approximate equilibrium or not. Step two, we're going to have those two strategies play each other and compute the EV, which is what Carvener's EV is great at. Then step three, we'll use Carvener's EV's maximally exploitive button to compute a best response EV for the hero and see how much EV he gained. So the hero was playing the strategy that might be GTO. We let him switch to a new strategy where he exploits the villain as much as possible and we see how much EV he gained. And if you Wikipedia the definition of Nash equilibrium, you'll know that if you're actually at a true equilibrium, that number would be zero. If you're an approximate number equilibrium, he'll probably gain something, hopefully a small amount if your strategy is good. Step four is key. In Carver's EV, you need to undo that best response calculation, go back to your starting point. And then step five is we now compute a best response EV for the villain, and we see how much EV the villain gains when he best responds. And the bigger of the numbers from step three and step five is our epsilon distance. So you guys are now armed with the knowledge of how to actually do this calculation. Um, I'll keep these instructions on my FAQ. I've had them there for a long time now. Um, occasionally people get snares where they think GTO range builder is wrong and they'll email me. Usually I check it myself. Luckily so far uh, we've never had an error that was actually valid. But I started putting instructions up so that people could also check them on their own through CREV, mostly because it's really time consuming for me to check them all. Uh, but that'll be there for you guys. If you ever want to check my strategies, check someone else's. Instructions are here. You can rewatch this video. And let's dive into our CREV example and see how to actually do this. So step one here, of course, is we need candidate strategies. I'm going to assume we're trying to validate a GTO range builder example here. So I got a solution up. Um, I just put in, you know, random board, random ranges, like the, the methods what I'm focused on, not that this is modeling some interesting situation here. Uh, so step one is, as I said, we're going to use CREV for this. We need to get the solution into CREV. And unfortunately, there is no nice, easy, automated way to do this. It's a tedious manual process. I've done a lot of it because I you know, like to check my work every time before I release an update or something. I'll do some of this. Um, step one, though, is going to be to get the hand ranges in here. So I clicked this grid button to view the hero strat, clicked expand range, cut and paste the hand range into the text input in CREV. That's the small blind player who's our hero here. Close this, get the villain range, same thing, expand range, get the range string, cut and paste it, paste it into CREV. And that is step one. Step two, which I already did for us here, is you would need to set up a whole game tree that is exactly the same as the GTO range builder game tree. So I went through and did that bet 70 call. I set the stack sizes. Um, we need to do that as well. I set the stack sizes to 70 chips for both players. Added 
105 chips to the pot here. Um, and then I put in the board cards up here. So that is getting the initial state set up. We have our game tree, we have our board, and we have our starting hand ranges, our starting stacks. Next, we need to actually get the strategy in here. And unfortunately, this part is a little bit of a pain. But we'll do what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one node on video here with you guys, and then I'll pause the video, get the rest of the strategy in, and then show you guys how to actually calculate the distance. So if we want to get the strategy in, um, this will give you a high level view of what we're betting with. We always will need to look in the list to check the suit specific combo frequencies because even on a board like this with ranges like this that seem like suits shouldn't matter, because the jack of spades is here and pocket jacks is a big hand, hands that block uh, something like ace jack spades are a different strength than hands that don't block something like ace jack spades. So we always have to be careful to actually use the list except in cases where the frequencies are 100% here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in these 100% cases first. So we'll go to conditions here with ace ace, queen queen, or king queen suited. We are going to be betting 100%. Then next, we're doing mixed strategies with kings, ace queen, and ace jack suited. So we'll have to go look at what exactly we do with the various combos of those hands here. So it looks like with ace jack clubs, we're betting 30% of the time. With ace jack diamonds, we're betting 30%. Ace jack hearts, we're betting 30%. And we can't have ace jack spades because there's a spade on the board. So we can just say ace jack suited and 30%. Okay, next we should look at pocket kings. Um, looks like with kings, kings, all these kings combos, we're betting 30, 70, 87%. So we can just put that in for all our kings at once. King, king, 87. Um, and then what was left was just uh, our ace-queen combos here with ace-queen suited. So this, I think, is where the suits do matter. Um, ace hearts, queen hearts, we're betting 99. Uh, you might be confused why these add up to 101. I round to the nearest uh, whole number. So if you have like 98.5 and 1.5, those will round to 99 and 2. Um, so card runner's EV only lets you put in up to a whole percent anyway. So I'm just going to say that we bet at 99%. Uh, that won't affect our epsilon calculation much at all. So ace queen, ace hearts, we have 99, we bet it. So for the other ace queen, same for ace queen and ace diamonds, same for ace clubs, ace queen ace clubs, and then I think we never bet the one with spades, but I'll go back through the list and find it just to make sure. Oh no, spades is 26%. So let's get those in. This is uh, ace d, queen d, ace clubs, queen clubs. And because of that thing I just mentioned that uh, we can only put whole numbered percents in, you know, the GTO, GTO range builder strategy, there it's rounding heavily to actually display it to you. So um, we're not going to be able to get the exact GTO range builder strategy. You know, it's storing things up to like eight decimal places. Uh, so we're not going to get exactly 0 0.01 for our Nash distance. But the goal here is that we should get something close. We should get something small. If GTO range builder says it should be, you know, 0 0.01 and we get a number like one or something significantly bigger as our Nash distance. Uh, that would be bad. That would mean GTO range builder would definitely be wrong. Uh, I'm sure we won't get that. But even if we got like 0.1, I wouldn't be surprised because not only do we have to round to these percentages, but CREV also does Monte Carlo. So there's a randomness uh, factor that's added in here. So we'll see exactly what we get. But, you know, you're never going to get quite as accurate as GTO range builder does because it has the strategy stored as very precise decimal representations, not as just, you know, 99%. It's actually, you know, 99.438 or something like that. So that's one node. Um, let's check our work. The way we do that is we'll do an EV run. And if we enter the strategy correctly, we should see that the villain's checking 58.6% of the time. If I made a mistake, we'll get something different. So bet 41.4, which matches GTO range builder. 
check 58.6, which matches. So I got this strategy incorrectly. Now, like I said, I'm going to pause the video because we have to do the same thing for these three other decision points, and I don't want to make you guys sit through watching me do that. So I'll pause the video, I'll come back when the strategy's in, and we'll go from there. Okay, I got the whole strategy in here, and I just did an EV run to check it, and uh, we get 54.87, just like GTO Range Builder does, and all the percentages of actions match up almost exactly. We got a 54.6 instead of a 54.5 here, but I think that's just a rounding error um, due to the whole percentages that we have to put in. So I think we're ready to actually calculate the Nash distance. Um, let's remember what our slide said. Step one, input the candidate strategy. Step two, compute the EV. We did that. The, we'll work from the hero's EV, so his EV is 50.13. Uh, step three, compute a best response for the hero. How much EV did he gain? So let's go to CREV, and we'll just do that. Remember, our hero here is the small blind. So we can't measure his EV gain as accurately as we might like because uh, of the way Carter's EV splits it across these two nodes, but we know his EV is the pot size minus the villain's EV. So if we start with our uh, 105 and subtract off this, we'll get 50.15. The villain's EV went down by 0 0.02 and the heroes went up by 0 0.02. So that's a little more than our 0 0.01 here, but again, I think that's a rounding error. Uh, so that's a 0 0.02 is the hero's gain. Then remember the next step was to undo and then compute a best response EV for the villain and see how much he gained. So undo, that'll get rid of that exploitive range and go back to what we had. And now the villain is the BB. So we're gonna see how much EV he gained. Remember his was 54.87 before and it's now 54.89. So he gained uh, 0.02 chips. So now we take the larger of those two numbers uh, they were both 0 0.02, so 0 0.02, and that is our epsilon equilibrium distance. And again, like I said, if, if GTOR disagrees with Carmen's EV by a hundredth of a chip, that's not a big deal. Even by a tenth of a chip wouldn't necessarily be a big deal. But if you were to run this calculation on a strategy that was, you know, substantially not GTO, had, you know, these frequencies significantly wrong, you'd get a much bigger Nash distance. So just to demo that real quickly, let's say someone tells you, you know, oh, it's actually not important to mix with ace-jack here. Uh, we can just always uh, bet it. So if I go and change this to 100%, um, sorry, 100, and save and close, we can rerun this kind of calculation here now. So if we rerun the EV, the EV should be the same uh, as it was before. Wait for it. Sorry, CRV runs slow when I'm filming. Um, you know, approximately the same, 54.86 instead of 87. But I suspect now that if we exploit from the small blind strategy, we'll get a slightly bigger Nash distance because the strategy got a little more exploitable. And we can see that now when we exploit from the small blinds perspective, the BB's EV goes down by a whole chip as opposed to two hundredths of a chip. So just that one little error in the strategy made the Nash distance explode. Um, so two things to take away from that. One is, you know, how precise a 0 0.02 or 0 0.01 chip equilibrium is. It's extremely precise. This is dead on. Don't mess with it. This is GTO. The other takeaway is that when you're doing this, you know, I do this all the time and I almost always make some small mistake in entering and copying over strategy into CREV. Uh, so if you do make that strategy mistake, uh, you can incorrectly think the Nash distance is very big. So, you know, whether you're checking to your range vote or someone else's strategies, always give them benefit of the doubt and, uh, you know, triple check your calculations before you decide that some strategy is clearly wrong because it's very easy to make mistakes, especially if you miss a suit specific part of the strategy that is relevant. So like you guys didn't see me enter this, but if you look down here, you do different things with the ace of hearts, queen of hearts, then you do the ace of spades, queen of spades, because it blocks ace jack differently. Um, so you always have to be careful and precise when you carry out these measurements, but so long as you do so, Carver's EV will let us totally ver verify, yes, this is a GTO strategy, 
And if I put even one mistake into it, no, it's not GTO at all. So that's what I'm trying to get at when I say that GTO is scientific and it's verifiable. You don't have to take my word for it on GTO Range Builder, and you don't have to take anyone else's word for it when they tell you they know what a GTO strategy is. And uh, this is a case with small hand ranges. It's rare that with a big hand range, a mistake so small with one hand would make the Nash distance explode so much. But, uh, you know, small mistakes that are deviate from GTO are detectable. You can use Carter and ZV. You can tell this guy is making a mistake. This is not GTO versus this strategy is GTO. It's verified, valid, and something I should use in my games. So that's how you do it for the river. What about verifying a turn scenario? Um, this gets a lot more complicated because as we know, uh, you can't have a strategy that only says what to do on the turn. A full turn strategy has to say what to do on the turn and what to do on every possible river card that might come. And what that means is that rather than having one river tree like this, we have a turn tree and then we have you know 48 different river trees, all of which might be areas where our strategy would fail to be GTO. And Cardinal ZV does have a way for us to represent those multiple river branches that might come. Um, it's called the layers approach. They have a tutorial video. If you go to help uh, video manual, uh, layers is what you want. And what it lets you do is you set four board cards. So up to the turn, you set statically. And then on the river, I have these different categories of river cards that might come. And you could, if you wanted to set, you know, all 48 different river cards. If you're looking at a really complicated scenario, there'll be different GTO range builder will tell you play different strategies on every river card. And any accurate GTO strategy would do that. Uh, if, you, if you had big ranges just because of all the blocking effects that can come up. Um, obviously, entering all that data into GTO Range Builder will take, or sorry, entering all that GTO Range Builder strategy into Carnivore ZV will take days. Uh, defining a full strategy is just a lot of work. What I did here just to show you guys how this works is I took a really simple scenario so that we can see what happens. So this is the solution to the brain teaser that is currently brain teaser number nine on my blog. It's also... Uh, going to be in my next Carter's video. You can watch me solve it algebraically there, so you can see, you know, the GTO range builder solution matches up exactly with math. There's no such thing as GTO versus math. They have to agree, or someone made a mistake. Um, but I loaded this up, I put the solution in, and I want to show you guys how you do the same kind of analysis in CREV on the turn. So I've got the whole solution in here, I've got a strategy. Again, what the strategy is doesn't matter. We don't need to know what GTO looks like. The actual process for verifying its epsilon distance is first we run the EV of the two strategies that we think are candidates against each other. These are our candidates. And when it's done, we'll get an EV. We'll see it's 25.32 for the BB. We'll run exploitive play um, from the small blinds perspective. And that'll run. We'll see the EV changed very slightly by about uh, three hundredths of a chip. Undo that. Go back to where we were. Um, so our first EV difference was three hundredths of a chip. Um, get it back to the 25.32 that it was. Okay, now we'll do it from the big blind player's perspective. And... Wait for it. Okay, he gained uh, 0 0.4 chips. So our epsilon distance here would be 0 0.4. Uh, again, the GTO range mode solution is actually more accurate than that. That's just uh, rounding on converting the solution into CREV. However, there's a problem. Uh, CREV doesn't actually do best responses across all the river nodes. When you tell CREV to do a best response, uh, it only computes maximum exploited play up to the last street where all the cards were defined. So if you note, when I was doing these exploitative uh, calculations, we were not actually altering any of these river strategies. They were all fixed. So what we learned is that assuming the river strategies are right, there's, you know, we have a very tight epsilon equilibrium on our turn strategy. Our turn strategy does not have a leak in it. 
but that's assuming these river strategies are right. It doesn't, we didn't check are all the river equilibrium right. But that's okay, I already taught you guys how to check a, a river equilibrium. So what you would need to do if you want to check the whole thing is you need to take all of these nodes that go to, to the river, um, make a separate CREV file for them. So I have an example here, and you do this for each of the different river outcomes here. So I have one of my river categories here is the straight river comes. Um, and both players check, or you know, the villain bets 50 and gets called. Those are both possible outcomes. Um, so if I go into my separate straight river file, where I said, uh, you know, sorry, I named the file straight river, but it's a check on the flush river strategy, actually. Uh, a flush comes here. Um, then I verified that the strategy I had on my flush outcome, which was that the small blind bets all his hands and the big blind calls 56%, which is actually not one minus alpha. I can verify that this river outcome is in fact a GTO play from both players by doing the same standard thing we did before. I run it, uh, I run an EV check. We see that the BB's EV is uh, 0 0.015 chips. I do an exploitative line from the big blinds perspective. Okay, he gained 0 0.011 chips. That's almost nothing. Undo, do an exploitative line from the small blinds perspective. Okay, he gained nothing. Uh, so his component was zero. So this component of the strategy has an ash distance of about one hundredth of a chip. Um, so like I said, this is actually the flush river. So we'll go back and see. This is the flush river after a uh, bet of 50 is called. So if we go back to our brain teaser check and look at bet 50, uh, bet 50 up here being called and look at our flush outcome. So spade is the flush coming, and we can see we've got this exact same strategy. Uh, the frequency is supposed to be 56.5%, so I put it as 56% in one and 57 as the other, just to check that that worked. I tried it with both values. Uh, that's, that's rounding is where that tiny bit of Nash distance came from. And now we know that this particular river branch is good. And so this very simple toy game has like uh, 12 river branches that you need to check. Um, any real scenario would have hundreds. So testing them all manually in a big case is not very practical, but you can test this one manually uh, with some effort. So that's how you check both river and turn strategies. Um, note that if this turn strategy, if you wanted to check if it was GTO, you wouldn't even really need to check the turn if it was significantly wrong. Checking a few different river outcomes, you'd find one that was wrong, most likely. Uh, but now you know how to check the turn if you're so motivated to do so. Um, obviously, GTO Range Builder has the code in it to compute best maximally exploitive, best response play across every river card that might come. So I could release a tool someday if I kind of extract that part of the code out to compute best, best responses and Nash distances very quickly for you. I haven't been motivated to do that yet because I figure if people don't believe GTO Range Builder and don't believe my Nash distance when it's in GTO Range Builder, they're not going to believe my Nash distance computing tool. But if that's you know, something there's demand for, uh, let me know, and I'm happy to take a crack at making that code accessible to people. Um, I think that is it for this part. That's actually how you calculate it. And let's wrap up with a few final thoughts. Okay, so final thoughts. You have the power. Um, GTO is a scientific, scientific verifiable property of a strategy. And if people don't provide their own proof that their strategy is GTO, you know, ideally by a, an epsilon distance. You can test it yourself. You, if you have CREV, uh, you have everything you need to test river strategies reasonably quickly with a lot of effort. You can test a turn strategy. Uh, you can test the river component of their strategy um, 
one caveat I forgot to mention that I definitely should clarify on that. If you test the river component of a strategy, you need to make sure it's on the equilibrium path. You need to make sure it's uh, not something that never that no player ever puts themselves in that position, because uh, generally GTO strategies will not be subgame perfect. So GTO strategies don't need to be they don't need to perfectly respond to playing perfectly on the river when it's in a spot where the term bet's never actually called. So, uh, you know, be careful, read about subgame perfection, and understand that before you go nuts on testing turn strategies. Um, the other thing I want to bear in mind with that is that people do make mistakes. So if there's a typo in a book where, you know, it says do one thing with a hand and another, as we saw, that can make the Nash distance get a fair amount bigger. Um, and like I said, you know, you'll make your own mistake entering it into CREV. I actually kind of almost panicked when I was making that brain teaser example because I had an error in my CREV calculation, but I thought it might have been that uh, some edge case made GTORB have a mistake in the strategy, which of course ended up being not the case. But, uh, you know, I don't want to start a GTO witch hunt with this video. Uh, my goal is just to make it clear that there's no GTO versus math is a ridiculous concept. GTO is math, GTO is scientific, and if someone says something's GTO, you don't have to take their word for it. You have the power to test and prove or disprove their claim. All right, so that's the end. Um, on my blog, what I'll do uh, within the next few days is I will put up a link to the scenario that we looked at in GTO Range Builder as well as the link to the river CREV file. Um, that way you guys can, you know, double check my work on this specific example, follow along with it and really understand what's going on if you're curious. Uh, if you have any questions on this, you can always ask in the comments, you can tweet at me at GTO Range Builder, you can post on the blog. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe on YouTube and I'll try and keep good stuff coming out uh, thanks for watching, guys.